for the very first time, you are going to hear the implosion of the Ocean Gate Titan submersible. Now, this sound was picked up by NOAA's Ocean Noise Reference Station Network. Now, before we dive into the audio, let's get a better understanding of what the system is, what it's composed of, and how it works. All right, so what is NOAA's Ocean Noise Reference Station Network? Well, it is a series of 13 passive acoustic monitoring sites. Um, these are hydrophones that are deployed all over the United States coastlines. So anywhere from the Gulf of Alaska, even down to Hawaii, Gulf of Mexico. The one that I believe picked up the anomaly is this one here, NRS-8. And we're going to look at that here in a second. Now, these are a series of hydrophones that are anchored to the seafloor, and they pick up sounds. So NOAA actually provides a demonstration video, and I'm going to show it to you guys here. This is a hydrophone that is deployed at the bottom of the ocean, and when an earthquake occurs, the sound waves travel, and this hydrophone that is mounted underwater is able to detect those waves. Now, remember in one of our previous videos, we have this SOFAR channel, which is between 500 meters and 1,000 meters. And this is where sound waves can travel very long distances underwater. It's where sound will travel the best. And now this ship here, they're able to pick up these hydrophones, retrieve them, retrieve data from them, and then perform studies. So the goal of this project is to, over a long period of time, study the ambient sound underwater and see how that's affecting marine life. So they say here that because water is denser than air, sound travels very efficiently underwater, which is true. Sound travels a little over four times faster underwater than it does out of the water. And it, they go on to say sounds from species of marine life and human activity can be heard many miles away and in some cases across oceans, which is what we just looked at with the SOFAR channel. Passive acoustic instruments record these sounds in the ocean as well as nearby sources. And remember from our previous video, passive acoustic just means that you're actively listening. Active acoustic is what boats use and ships use on the bottom of their vessels. They will shoot out a sound and then wait for it to come back. And then they'll, they'll be able to detect depth. They'll be able to map the seafloor. It's also what dolphins use when they're clicking and making sounds. They're actually sending out sonar waves, waiting for that sound to bounce back. And then they're able to actually get a very detailed picture underwater they can actually see in zero visibility and they go on to say here with the vast distances that sound can travel underwater passive acoustic monitoring is a powerful observation tool that should be applied to a variety of platforms to detect and characterize sounds produced by marine organisms mammals fish and vertebrates natural resources of oceanographic processes such as waves rain undersea earthquakes and then anthropogenic resources of noise which originate from human activity contribute to the overall ocean noise environment such as noise from vessel traffic as well as oil and gas exploration so they're really looking at those things to determine what sort of effect does that have on mammals and marine life now here if we look at the description here in the video that the coast guard posted they say that this was was, um, that this sound was detected from NOAA's passive acoustic recorder approximately 900 miles from the Titan submersible implosion site. And then they just released it here on February 7th, 2025. So now if we go back and look at this passive acoustic recorder number, this is going to be NRS08. It says here that this is on the northeastern continental United States. There's one other um, hydrophone that is located out there um, that's owned by NOAA but that one is a little bit further inland and here it's got the coordinates and then if we look here they actually provide the water depth that this system is moored in so this is in 3500 meters so isn't that crazy it's almost in the exact same depth that the Titan imploded in isn't that wild so if we take these coordinates here and paste these into Google Maps, this is the location that it provides. Now, it said that there were 900 miles from the Titan shipwreck. Well, I'm pretty sure this is the hydrophone that they're referring to, um, even though there's uh, another one out here on the East Coast. 
because if we measure this, it is about 900 miles, as you guys can see down here. Uh, it's about 925 miles from the Titan shipwreck. So I'm pretty positive that this is the one that uh, picked up the sound. Now, I also want to remind you guys that the United States Navy has a system of sonar buoys or hydrophones along the East Coast as well. And it was reported that the Navy had detected this sound, not NOAA. Now, I believe what is going on is one of two things. As we can see here, either the Navy is tied in and has access to this information and they provided it to the Coast Guard or the Navy has their own buoys and they reported it to the Coast Guard when the search and recovery missions were going on at the time. And this hydrophone here owned by NOAA was actually sort of the public scapegoat. This is the one that they could use and say, oh, it was just NOAA that detected the sound. And all of a sudden the Navy had nothing to do with reporting this crucial and time sensitive information to the Coast Guard. So I think that's, that's one of two things that is going on there. But here you can see a list of partners and at the top, the biggest one here is the United States Navy. So it's certainly possible that they're tied into this project. It says here uh, on their Passive Acoustic data page, if we scroll down and look at the partners, um, one of those here is the United States Navy. So it's also certainly possible that the United States Navy is using this information. So with that being said, let's go ahead and look at this footage. I'm going to play it three times for you guys. I think this is something that we've all really been wanting to hear, and we have been looking forward to this. Just keep in mind that we are listening to the passing of five people, unfortunately, which was due to pure negligence. So with that being said, let's go ahead and listen to this audio. And so here they have two different audio visuals for us. Here you can actually hear that initial implosion and then that low, slow, deep droning sound and that sound just carrying off into the ocean. Very eerie, eerie sound. Let's listen to it one more time. Yeah, you can hear that. It's actually, it sounds like a high-speed car crash is what it sounds like. Pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy to think that they had this information instantly when it happened, detected this anomaly, and we continued to spend millions of dollars searching for this. And, you know, we've kind of covered this before, but the narrative that was put out there was that we were looking for survivors that this this uh, this submersible was at the bottom of the ocean or floating at at the top of the ocean it was obvious clear as day that they died instantaneously so let's listen to it one last time So this audio is something we've been wondering about for quite some time. If the United States Navy was able to tell the Coast Guard about this underwater anomaly consistent with an implosion, well, why hasn't that been released? Why wasn't that sound presented at the Coast Guard hearings? It's very possible that this was classified information and then that the Navy had to go through a, a long bureaucratic process to declassify it. Netflix is also dropping a documentary called Titan. Now, I'm sure if you guys have been watching our entire series, you're going to know more than even the directors of that documentary. I think you guys will still find it interesting, and we're going to um, sort of review that uh, documentary when it is released.
released here in the next coming months so make sure you guys are subscribed turn on your notification bell so you get updates i try to do posts a few times a week also just to keep you guys in the loop of everything so let me know what you guys thought about this recording does that change your perspective on anything um is it what you thought it would sound like personally i did sort of expect it to sound like this like the initial car crash sort of implosion and then the long droning sound waves that carried out throughout the ocean and you could just hear that tragedy for miles which is um, quite unfortunate but being that it was tied to the titanic is it, it's somewhat poetic i guess as always rest in peace to the victims and thank you guys very much until next time dive safe